Okay, guys, we're going to uh, welcome to the uh, Iowa Veterans. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Good job, Dirty Mike. My name is Jerry Connor. I'm president of the National Veterans Awareness Organization and the national coordinator of the National Veterans Awareness Ride. Uh, we're visiting Marshalltown today to visit the vets, and that's something we do every day. In our mission from Auburn, California, just outside Sacramento, to Washington, D.C. Each day we stop at between one and three veterans' homes or veterans' hospitals. We participate in memorial services, and we speak in schools on uh, service to the community and giving back to your country. So we have uh, some guys right here going to take you out to the various units. We'll kind of split everybody up into small groups. At 10.45, we'll have lunch ready. This year we're going to do something different. We're going to be in the Malloy LRC, not the Copper Kettle. It's just a bigger room. We'll be able to spread out a little bit. We'll have everybody so crammed together, so it'll be a lot nicer for you. Brad, can you point out where that is? Sure, right, right the down table. the sidewalk here. Billiard table. the slider door. Oh, the pool where tables are. Billiard table. table. Right. <laughs> sure, that's right. I'm sorry. Where the pool tables are at, we're going to have tables. lunch. Billiard so tables. You get done a little early, they'll be ready to serve about 1045. In 2005, uh, a number of veterans uh, decided to put together a ride that would be going across the United States and accomplishing the mission that I just described. Uh, when it started, it was a, a very informal uh, thing that they put together. And I'd have to say that these folks who were involved in the very start, they have stayed with us. And we have built upon their shoulders, and it's turned out to be a really rewarding thing, not only for the veterans that we meet, for, but for the veterans and the non-veterans who are part of our organization. Thank you for coming out. My gosh, what a great honor to have you here with the Iowa Veterans Home. It is such an honor. I'm uh, actually coming up one year tomorrow, so unless I get a call from the governor between now and midnight, I'll be here one year for the uh, hey, my, yeah. my, my first year. Happy yeah. anniversary! Yeah. Thank you. But I'm not sure maybe that was a prelude. Brad says, this guy's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I know nothing. He, he might know something no, I don't. No, no. So, but no, thank you for coming out. It's so uh, it's so great to have you here. Paul, though, Paul and Thomas back here, they were saying, these things are nothing. Look at their rides. They got some super rides there. Uh, but it's so important. You know, each, uh, all of our veterans walked in our same shoes that we did, et cetera. So, so thank you for coming out. Have a great trip out to uh, to the wall. All right, how many uh, How many Army? Yeah. Senior service, there we go. How many Marines? Oh, you need a few, all of those. Navy? Navy? Huh. Are in Air Force? Rut row. Yeah, <laughs> crew rest. Make sure you take care of these guys who are crew rest, you know. Jeez. All right. And how many Coast Guard? believe in our mission but are not veterans? There we go, okay. Hey. Oh, Coast Guard, all right. As this ride comes across country, we go through different states, and each state has its own state coordinator to help to, with, to coordinate where we go to visit the vets and uh, uh, meals and lodging. So uh, that's my job when we come across to Iowa. And Iowa is one of our busiest states. We make three stops at uh, VA facilities, and uh, we do two wreath langs, and uh, there's... Uh, two dinners and a breakfast and a lunch. Thank you again for coming out. It's so important, it's so meaningful to have you stop by. And we appreciate it. And we'll have a great lunch for you. All right? All right, Brad. Now, now, you. now you can disperse them, Brad. Thank you. There's a lot of emotion that is involved in visiting the veterans, both the uh, trauma victims, uh, the memory loss victims, uh, the long-term care uh, patients. Uh, there's a lot of emotion that goes into these visits, and I, I'd have to say that uh, they're all meaningful in their own way. Uh, some of us are, are very affected by the 21, 22, 23-year-olds who are just getting started in life and had uh, some bad things happen to them. What gives us hope and what gives us strength is seeing the strength that these young people have, these men and women who are uh, fighting for our freedom and unfortunately had some problems. Uh, but equally as exciting for us is meeting uh, older Vietnam, Korea, and uh, World War II veterans and talking with them about some of their experiences in the past. And you know, a lot for a lot of these uh, women and men, 
This was one of the highlights of their life was uh, serving their country and uh, they always enjoy talking about it and sharing their experiences with us. Okay, we're going to walk to the, the brick building across okay. the road. Yeah. My name is Tedra. Tedra. Nice to meet right. you. Tony. Nice to meet you. 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 Ike, are you two together? Nice to meet you. Norway, Ike is Norway. Wow, is there something going on here? What's going on? You do not have to be a veteran to be a member of the National Veterans Awareness Organization. Probably a good 20% of the folks who are here today are non-veterans, but they believe in our mission. Uh, also, you don't have to ride a motorcycle to be part of the National Veterans Awareness Organization. There are a number of folks here on motorcycles, but that's not mandatory either. Uh, we're open to everyone who is uh, in agreement with our mission, uh, follows the rules, and uh, enjoys making a day a little bit brighter for our veterans.